Hello. Thanks for visiting the music shop. How can I help you today? Oh. Okay. You told the attractive person you've been chatting with that you are as good a musician as Prince, and now you need to learn how to play electric guitar, acoustic guitar, bass, bass synth, electric piano, acoustic piano, mini moog, poly moog, clavinet, drum, organ, bongos, and flute? That'd be a pretty crazy interaction, huh? Good thing I don't work at a music shop, because the only appropriate response to that person would be, get out. There is only one prince. No one will be able to play like him again. Perhaps a bit harsh, but that person had a lot of nerve to talk like that, and if I had left it hanging, you'd probably be too upset to fall asleep yourself. Some people believe our existence is part of a simulation, but I think that the strongest argument against that is that who or whatever created the simulation would not be able to build a universe, make a guy like Prince, and then wait 13.77 billion years to reveal him. That's just too many years to be sitting around thinking, I can't wait for them to see this guy I made, Prince. That tests even the most divine patience. Hello, my name is Joe Para. I'm back in my basement, and while there aren't any instruments for sale down here, the piece is a score that composer Karima Walker sent for the episode immediately evoked a local music store for me. Not a guitar center, no offense to them. When I had little money, I would buy chords there, use them to do a project, and then bring them back within the return window. Use the refund to buy a deli sandwich for dinner. So while I appreciate a guitar center, Karima's music brought me to a more local music store where you go in and it's got carpeting or an old gray tile floor. It's filled to the brim with used trumpets and seems empty because the owner is in the back refurbishing a guitar. Either that or giving a trombone lesson. It smells like sheet music and bow resin, maybe a little metallic too. Groovy. When the owner eventually comes out, they aren't mean, but definitely not enthusiastic about you touching all the instruments. However, when you tell them you are looking for a hollow body with a Bigsby so you can join your friends for a rockabilly jam sesh, they warm up immediately. I've got just the Gretsch for you. Are you able to picture the place? My mind probably also went to the local music store because Karima mentioned she had her old clarinet refurbished and learned how to play it again to record this nighttime score for us. You decided to take up the clarinet for this episode. Why clarinet? Well, I already had one, and um, I played clarinet for like a year when I was a kid in the school band in fourth grade. And the reason I picked it up then was because my dad had played clarinet briefly as a kid. So we just had this old clarinet in our family and then also, a couple years ago, someone named Ellery Saxel released this record called The Blue of Distance, and she plays clarinet in it a lot. And I thought it was so beautiful. And um, 
kind of made me realize like how how beautiful the clarinet can sound and yeah I think it was both of those reasons that it felt like available in a certain way how would you describe the sound of clarinet the first thing I think of is how people equate the cello to the human voice and that that's why people like it so much and I'm like well if a cello is a human voice like a clarinet is like <laughs> I'm sort of thinking of like a beaver <laughs> I don't know but like it's like a it's like a smaller mammal and it's like in the forest maybe I'm thinking of like clarinet when it's used in like a jazzier setting which feels there's something kind of funny about that to me like it's sort of this in a lot of ways all the buttons and the reed they're sort of like finicky and and fancy and so there's something about it that's sort of got like this pomp to it um right like but it, it's also like kind of cute you know so um Maybe beaver actually is like a good comparison because they've got like a job to do, but they're also really kind of cute and, you know, kind of majestic in their own way. Suddenly something caught Peter's eye. He noticed a cat crawling through the grass. Russian composer Sergei Prokofiev saw the small mammal connection too when he used the clarinet to embody the cat in his symphony, Peter and the Wolf. I'm sure you've heard it. It's one of the most played pieces in all of classical music, written to help children learn the different instruments through association with character. Peter was represented by strings, violin, viola, cello, the bird, flute, wolf, French horn, and grandpa, he guessed it, bassoon. Where do all these instruments come from? Music stores. But then, where do music stores come from? The dreams of retired music teachers. I called the Ben Boyer band teacher at the Buffalo City Schools for more than 30 years, who opened a music shop of his own just a few years ago. Hello there, Northtown Music, how can I help you? Hi, Mr. Boyer, it's Joe Parra. Hi, Joe. I always answer, I always, uh, we always do it that way here at Northtown Music. <laughs> What made you want to open the music store? Good question. Um, so I had a dream one night. Um, you know how like Noah's Ark, you know? I was going to collect up, like, all the animals and stuff. So my dream was, sounds so crazy, this dream, that I would collect one of each instrument that nobody else knew how to play the instruments. So I was going to be the person who was going to teach the world the rest of the instruments. And so... Um, I opened the store uh, and collected all these instruments, uh, <laughs> sort of, Joe. <laughs> That's great. How did the dream end? So I'm not quite sure. I don't, you know, you don't, you don't always remember your dreams, but I, I, I did have this dream. It's a true story. And, and um, I mean, I'm not religious or anything, although we do have tambourines that I have like hands praying on them which is funny um they sell really good too but it was just like a dream where like i'm collecting a sack support a tuba because that's what i sort of did at the store i started with absolutely nothing and then built clarinets and now they keep multiplying so uh it's a, so that was a it was a funny dream so would you say your dream is kind of it's underway well so my dream really was is teaching and being a teacher, and I like teaching at the store. Um, being a merchant is a sort of a secondary thing that comes with the store, and it keeps me with my friends, all my instruments here. How would you pair students with instruments when they started playing? 
Um, that's another good question, Joe. So some there are a lot of different reasons why you would play an instrument. Um, one is that, it, like, if you have a certain kind of embouchure, sometimes that fits better for trumpet. If you have teardrop lip, you shouldn't be playing flute. Um, some people are more uh, sort of hyper or have different kinds of needs, so you might put them on percussion. Um, there's all kinds of uh, uh, things that sort of fit. But after a while, like like after decades, you just get a feel. And then kids want to play a certain instrument, too. Like if a kid was bigger in size, people tend to want to put them on uh, tuba, you know, or a bigger instrument. Yeah, like it's because they they can handle it. If you have dental problems, um, it's probably not good for you to play an instrument that uses your mouth. There's actually a, a, a nice review of your store, and, and kind of like that exact thing happened. I guess the kid came in wanting to learn clarinet, and you directed him towards drums. Yeah, which actually created some controversy because the school systems pick instruments for kids, or and they're trying to round out their system. So the school system was sort of mad at me because I was meddling in, but I had my line in the sand. Music stores are like a hot spot, like for co- people to come in and see what new products people come in and talk to you about. Like rappers come in my store, um, like a famous, uh, like a metal band wanted to film a video in my store, you know, um, like there's been so many different interesting things. How often do you eat at the Chinese restaurant next door? The Chinese restaurant at first, I, so this is a good one, Joe, because I taught their daughter cello. Really? And I also, they're too busy to go to the concert, so I went to the school to hear her play too as like a, you know, like a surrogate parent. And I, like the principal was there, they were asking me why I was there and stuff. But, uh, and so for the first few years, we would get Chinese food free, so we would eat a lot, <laughs> you know? And, um, Lately, we just once in a while get steamed dumplings. Uh, me and my son Steve, who works here, also. What was the first instrument you ever played? Hmm. I guess the saxophone. The real first real instrument was the saxophone. Why the saxophone? The, um, believe it or not, my mom played saxophone, and then I had an older brother who played saxophone, and I guess because Lucy played saxophone <laughs> I played saxophone or something so I played saxophone but this, I played and I was in a group and we weren't practicing so we got kicked out and then um, the Philharmonic the Buffalo Philharmonic came to my school and I listened to the orchestra and it was like there's magical sounds coming out of these uh, instruments and I was in fourth grade and then when I got to fifth grade after I got kicked out I said I definitely want to play and then they put me back in on Barry saxophone huh. and I stuck with that so I didn't want to interrupt Ben but I went back and asked him which Lucy he was referring to so it was Lucy Ball from I Love Lucy that inspired your mom to think, play saxophone yes and then, I believe that's where that comes from yes that's very neat and uh, did Lucy Ball play the saxophone for real or Lucille just Ball, as a gag no she actually played the saxophone um as a child and if you go to the museum there's like a saxophone of hers you know what i mean uh in the museum in jamestown new york so lucy uh i, I always felt like that inspired my mom to pick up saxophone ben is talking about the lucille ball museum in jamestown new york which I can confirm is worth visiting. There's a lot of gift shop, but I've been there two times and learned a lot. For instance, did you know that Lucille Ball played a pivotal role in Star Trek being made? The original pilot flop, so she, as head of Desilu Productions, financed the second Star Trek pilot that led to the series getting picked up. Her studio also made the original Mission Impossible series. And, as Ben mentioned, she played the saxophone. When the writers of I Love Lucy discovered that she played it in high school, 
They wrote an episode where Lucy auditions to play in Desi's big band. However, she played it too well for the comedy tour, so she had to relearn how to play the saxophone worse. For listeners who were alive in 1960 when Lucy and Desi separated, who did you side with during the divorce? Sound off in the comments. Sorry. Inappropriate. They were such a perfect comedy duo, and Lucy was wonderful playing against her musician husband. Kind of makes me wish we could see her do a scene with Prince. Perhaps Prince is trying to record something in the studio, and she starts playing with the knobs on the mixing console. Can you imagine the look on his face? Especially when she gets entangled in the magnetic recording tape. Prince is credited with playing 27 different instruments on his debut album, but there was one notable exception, clarinet. If I actually worked at a music store or was filling in for Ben and someone trying to outdo Prince came in, instead of telling them to get out, perhaps the better thing to say to them would be, don't try to be Prince. Be yourself. Take up the clarinet. And if they were still uncertain, I'd try and convince them with the best clarinet facts I know. A clarinet's name comes from the Italian word clarinetto, which means little trumpet. Traditionally, clarinets are made out of grenadilla. Grenadilla is a member of the Rosewood family and is incredibly strong. Clarinets can actually fade into a note as well as fade out of one, which sets them apart from any other instruments. The largest clarinet, the contrabass clarinet, is seven foot five inches long. Clarinets do not have a spit valve, instead, Musicians remove spit and condensation with a silk or microfiber swab. What do Richard Nixon, Alan Greenspan, and Nicki Minaj have in common? They play the clarinet. The clarinet was invented by a German instrument maker named Johann Christoph Denner in the 17th century. Denner took the shale mold medieval woodwind equipped with single or double reeds and added the barrel with two keys. The modification allowed musicians to play on higher registers. Mozart was an early fan of the clarinet and incorporated the new instrument into his composition. The most common type of clarinets fall into three categories. Soprano, alto, and bass. But here is a specific list of clarinets. The B-flat clarinet, A clarinet, the E-flat clarinet, the alto clarinet pitched to the key of E-flat, the bass clarinet pitched to the key of B-flat, the contra-bass, contra-alto clarinet, Bassett clarinet, the Bassett horn, the C clarinet, a flat clarinet, the octo contrabass clarinet, the octo contralto clarinets, and there are a few more, but it's getting late, so I'll leave you with the sopranino clarinet.
get access to the full eight hour Max Drift episodes, please consider joining Patreon too. I hope you have good dreams tonight.